Hi there, Lyric Services. Trisha Warner here with your weekly Pilates work. Today happens to be World Mental Health Day, so I thought we would focus on our practice on improving mental health and um, addressing uh, some of the things that we can do with exercise to benefit our overall um, mental wellness. So um, movements do boost your mental health. Um, studies have shown that exercise releases neurotransmitters like endorphins and dopamine, which have been proven to decrease pain and increase sensations of pleasure. So uh, why wouldn't we use nature's way of um, exercise to uh, be like an antidepressant, anti-anxiety type of prescription. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna start with a little bit of relaxation because the first thing you need to do is calm your nervous system. If you're feeling anxious, uh, anger, frustration, maybe you're not, but this is a good one you can refer back to if, if you are feeling that way when at one time, um, or you can just um, kind of Remember the principles I'm going to teach you today and utilize them in your own life when you need them. Um, so, you know, if you're sitting on your desk and you're really upset about the way a phone call went or something, stop and breathe and maybe move a little, stretch a little, do a few jumping jacks, try to get those neurotransmitters released as a natural way of taking care of your mental well-being. Um, so we're going to start with a little relaxation on the foam roller. Breath is a fantastic way of calming the nervous system. So we're gonna use a relaxation breath while laying on the foam roller. So you're gonna come onto your back. If you don't have a foam roller, grab a towel and uh, roll it up nice and tight. And then you can lay on that and get the same postural stretch. So that's how we're using it today. All right, so we're gonna find a little breath here. So we can find a uh, nice oxygenation here to the brain. Um, the more oxygen your brain has, the more uh, fuel it has to work with, right? So we need to breathe. So uh, just find a long spine position on here. If you need a pillow under your head, if, you're, if you feel like your face is tipping back, just put a pillow under your head, that's fine. Just a little bit, as much as necessary, as little as possible. All right, we're just gonna breathe here. So let's put our hands on the sides of our ribs and you're gonna breathe in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth, like you're fogging a mirror, let all that air out. And try to let the weight of gravity kind of conform your body to the foam roller here. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. A nice way to remember that is smell the cake, blow out the candles. So you're gonna breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, let it all go. All the worry, all the stress, I don't know if you saw my shirt, it says, hike more, worry less. So it kind of goes along with the theme of today. Use movement and exercise to take care of your uh, mental well-being. <sighs> Last one. Very soothing to your parasympathetic nervous system. Very relaxing and nice uh, breath exercise to do before you go to bed also. Let's bring our arms down by our sides. We're gonna go palms up to the ceiling. Slide your arms away from your body until you feel a nice stretch across the front of your chest. We do this in a lot of our other programs as well. It's a great postural stretch. It's great for um, reversing the uh, computer posture, right? Pause here and breathe. <sighs> Just let it all go. You can also imagine that there's like one of those weighted blankets on you. That was one of my favorite Christmas presents from my kids few years back, um, I still use it all the time as a weighted blanket. It's very calming to the nervous system. Bend your elbows. So just imagine, you know, like at the dentist when they put that lead blanket on you before they take the x-rays, that's the sensation we're going for here. Feel and, and give in to that weight. Try not to fight it. Let it pull you into the foam roller. Now we're gonna bring our hands back like we're making goal posts with our arms and you'll find a stretch here and breathe into it. <sighs> relaxing, letting all that worry go. Last breath here. Good, bring your arms down by your side, uh, thumbs facing the ceiling. Now bring both arms up and overhead, back as far as you can go, and then bring them back down. 
And we'll do that four more times. Up and down. Starting to move a little here now, yeah? Up and down. Last one. And down. Bring your hands up and behind your head. Keep that sensation of length through your spine. As you exhale, lift your head and shoulders. Look down towards your knees. Pull your tummy muscles in and roll back down. Exhale, lift two, three, four, five, six, two more. Great, lay back down. We're just gonna use our fingers now to draw the lower angle of our rib cage. So you're gonna start up close. Uh, I'm kind of tipping a little so you can see me. My hands are right along the bottom border of my rib cage, and I'm just tracing my rib cage with my fingers, kind of curling them under that, um, those bones a little bit, trying to get to my diaphragm, which gets very tight when we shallow breathe or we're feeling stressed or nervous. And this is a nice way to release that diaphragm muscle and allow better rib expansion, therefore allowing better breath and oxygenation of the brain. Very important function, right? Last one. Great. So another thing that's really important for um, a healthy mind is uh, moving your internal organs a little bit. Things get kind of bound down and tight in here. So we're gonna take this into a nice rotation exercise. Um, bring your arms out to the side, nice and wide, feet really wide on the mat. And then we're just gonna rock our knees over to one side. We've done this one before too. It's a really nice way to get some mobilization here through our internal organs. And bring them up and go over to the other side. Everyone knows the negative impacts of, of um, a poor mental health state, right? You get all kinds of GI issues in the gut, right? This is a nice way to release all that tension through the fascia of the trunk. It's nice for hip and back mobility too. Spine health. And let's do one more each side. We're gonna add a little coordination to this. So one of the wonderful principles of Pilates is having a mindful connection with your body to create movements, right? So Joseph Pilates talked a lot about that as the mind-body connection. And uh, coordination is a great way to practice that because you can challenge your mind to move your body in a certain way. So we're gonna do some different coordination stuff today. First, we're just gonna start with a reciprocal arm and leg movement, which is a fundamental of, of movement, right? When we, right from when we start crawling um, to walking. So we're gonna lift one leg and your opposite arm. Your leg's gonna go to tabletop, your arm's just gonna go to the ceiling, and then you're gonna put it down and switch and do the other side. Basic coordination, alternating arm and leg, reciprocal movement. So if you think about it, this is the arm swing during gait. Whatever foot goes forward, the opposite arm goes forward. Sometimes we lose that too, especially when we're working from home. We tend not to swing our arms as much when we rock, walk around the house. You're probably carrying something or you just aren't going far enough to actually engage an arm swing. So this is a nice way to connect your mind to the movement of reciprocal patterning for, for gait walking. Turns on the core a little too, yeah? Let's do one more each side. Good, and then set the feet down. You're just gonna open your knees a little bit. We're gonna bring our arms up to the ceiling. So let your hips open up here. We're gonna do a chest lift and engage the abdominals a little bit here. You're gonna exhale as you lift your head and shoulders, reach towards your feet, inhale, come back down. Exhale, lift two, three, four. We're doing eight, five, six, seven, and eight. Great job. So yeah, connecting your mind to the body, you have to be in the moment. You can't be thinking about what you're gonna get at the grocery store while you're trying to coordinate your arm and leg movement. So sometimes 
there's a real benefit to challenging coordination. Um, and actually, let's add one more component, speaking of challenging coordination. Give your brain one more thing to concentrate on so that you can't think about anything else. Um, really challenge the coordination here, maybe, depending on your level of coordination. We're just gonna add a head rotation. So whatever leg goes up, the opposite arm goes up, and then your head goes towards the arm that's up, and then put it down. So you're gonna switch, you're looking over the shoulder of the arm that's lifting to the ceiling. Not a normal pattern for gait, right? We don't walk like this, but we're challenging your brain to kind of think out of the normal patterning now. So just add, and we're getting some nice head rotation, which is great for your neck in this position. Good, two more. We'll do a little bit of everything today like we always do. Just focusing on programming that helps mental health, right? All right, bring your knees into a ball. Grab your shins. It's just gently rock side to side. Rocking is so calming as well. That's why we rock babies. It's very soothing to the nervous system. And sometimes we need that, you know? That's why we have rocking chairs. All right, and then you can put your feet back down and then we're just gonna lift one up for a little hamstring stretch here. Stretch the leg all the way up and let's pump that foot up. As we take care of our mental health, we need to take care of our cardiovascular health and that's getting that blood back up from those feet after sitting all day. Good, bend the knee, put it down other side and flex and point. You may feel a little tighter on one side than the other. We need to be accepting of our body as well. Like I want you to take this time to feel good about what you're doing instead of criticizing, oh geez, this hamstring's so tight or whatever. You know, I feel a big stretch on this side. That's what made me think of it. And go easy on yourself, Trisha, because you're doing it. You're moving, you're moving better than you would be if you weren't doing this. And um and any bit of movement is better than none. So this is a time, bring your other foot up too. This is a time to appreciate what you have and uh, work towards your goals, but also be accepting of, of what you can do and what you can't do. So speaking of that, corkscrew is pretty hard. So you might wanna bend your knees a little for this if the hamstrings are screaming at you or the hip flexors, those can be involved here too. So we're just gonna do circles. So just drawing a circle on the ceiling with both legs. You can think of it as a nice little back massage, but yes, your core is working, your abdominal muscles have to hold the weight of your legs up in this position. Let's switch and go the other way, circle around. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Great job, come back down. Bring the feet down, we're gonna come on up. So you may wanna turn on your side to get back up, that's fine. We're gonna come into quadruped. And I want you to kind of be relaxed in this position. Move all the way to your, the bottom of your mat. And we're gonna come back to those primary, um, primitive, fundamental movements uh, from, from our youth in crawling. When's the last time you actually tried crawling? It's a great mind-body exercise, and you're just gonna reciprocally crawl forward towards the front of your mat, and then crawl back. And don't think about it too much. Don't think about it at all, just go. Just resort on your instincts, crawling forward and back. If this is tender on your knees, don't do it. You know me. <laughs> just listen to your body. Gosh, going forward is so much easier than going back for me. I'm noticing, not criticizing, just noticing. Just crawling forward and back. Good, and let's do one more. Kind of fun, right? It's playful. It was fun when we were one, right? It's important. Come back to the middle of your mat. 
You're gonna untuck your toes. Let's stretch all the way back to child's pose. How appropriate as we're talking about our youth. Sit back and reach your sits bones to your heels. Reach the hands away from your body and stretch the whole length of your back out here. Breathing in and out. This is such a comforting stretch, really. Good, let's walk our hands over towards one side of the mat, kind of opening up that lateral portion of the spine. And then stretch here. And then come back to center and then go over to the other side. Good, coming back up onto all fours. Separate your feet a little bit and let's tuck the toes under. Really try to get the toes um, extended here. So I want you to try to get as much of the bottom of the toe on the mat as you can. And we're just gonna shoulder blades um, glide here. You're gonna glide your shoulder blades together. Keep your elbows straight the whole time. You're gonna wanna bend them. I want you to try to keep them straight. You're gonna lower your breastbone towards the floor and then push it away from the floor. So those shoulder blades as a result are gliding along your rib cage and working out all that tightness that we have from holding our arms in certain positions. Last one. Good, bring one leg out to the side. We're gonna stretch the inner thigh. Bring the leg so that the inside, let me move away from you, so that the inside of your um, foot is resting on the floor. And then we're just gonna lean forward and back, nice and easy. Good, and then switch and do the other side. I'll spin around for you. Bring that foot out to the side, same thing, out and in. Find that inner thigh stretch, it should feel good. Good, and then come back to quadruped. We're gonna get the triceps turned on here, those muscles in the back of your upper arm. So come down to, um, your forearms, the more you lean forward, the more work it's gonna be. So you decide where you wanna go. If this is hard for you, sit back a little. If you want the challenge, get the nose up over your thumbs there and lift the elbows up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two more. Feel it in the back of the upper arm, right? And 10. Now bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Now as you bend your elbows, they're going out to the side and then straightening back up. It's more chest and biceps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two more. And last one. Great, we're gonna come to sitting, crisscross applesauce. So go ahead and bring your feet in. If this position is too hard, sit up on your foam roller or a pillow, it's up to you. Holding onto your knees, we're just gonna take our upper body around our lower body. Kind of move that trunk around. Imagine that you're in a barrel and you're scraping your body along the inside of that barrel. So you hit the whole inside. Or one of my teachers said, cleaning a jar of peanut butter. You want to get all that peanut butter out of the jar. I love peanut butter, so that one works for me. If you don't like peanut butter, it probably won't be as appealing. And then we're going to switch it with the other way. Yes, exercise is such a better way to treat your mental health. You know, sometimes the easy temporary fix is to go for food, right? But it's so temporary. <laughs> this this benefit stays with you and you know will continue to benefit you as time goes on let's come into a little bit of a stretch here so both legs are going to come out on a little bit of a diagonal and you're leaning forward good we did single leg and quadruped now we're getting a little bit more hamstring so if if, if it's too much in the inner thighs just bring your feet a little closer together and lean forward come into this stretch and breathe into it
Good, come back up. Bring the legs back into crisscross. And we're just gonna do a little side bend stretch here, up and over, going with the flow. Good. And last one this way. And last one this way. Great, we're gonna come into proposal kneeling. So you're gonna come up on one knee, the other foot is gonna be out in front of you. You can be on the ball of your foot, on the back foot. Hands come behind your head, grow tall through your spine. We're gonna add a little rotation here. Rotate towards the front leg, rotate towards the back leg. And twist. Two, ooh, balance, hello, three, and three. Also such an important part of your um, mental well-being is, is getting your vestibular system fired up. Um, so that's it for that side. We're gonna come and switch to the other side. Find your balance, level out the hips, hands behind your head, twist towards the front leg, twist towards the back leg. Yeah, this is a good place to challenge your balance because you're not too far from the floor in case you fall. In the event of a failure, you're gonna be right here instead of falling all the way from standing, right? All right, we're gonna come up to standing. Come up as safely as we need to. Good, we're on good on time. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of footwork here. I'm gonna have you lift one heel up with that knee bent, and then you're gonna switch and do the other side. So we're gonna switch back and forth. Good, try to control it. one. Good. Now walk to the back of your mat. We're going to come into a forward roll down and we're actually going to walk our hands out to a plank and we're going to do some spine extension. So standing nice and tall, inhale, feel the length. Exhale, nod your chin towards your chest, round your shoulders, your upper back, your mid back, your low back. Come all the way down. So you may need to bend your knees to find the floor here. That's fine. And then you're gonna walk your hands out to a perfect plank position. Pull those tummy muscles in and up. Lower your knees, and then lower your upper body down to the floor. Prop yourself up on your elbows. In this position, I want you to think about pulling your shoulders down and away from your ears. Lifting your heart, finding that nice extension through the spine. And then we're gonna bend one leg up. Two, three, keep pumping it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch to the other leg. Bring it up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good, you're gonna lower your head and shoulders to the floor, kind of rest your forehead on your hands, looking straight down. I'm gonna turn my head to the side just so you can hear my instructions. We're gonna tense the muscles of one leg, really tense it. Keep it really straight and then hover the whole leg two inches off the ground. Keep the back muscles of that leg really active. As you circle the leg around into a circle, it's not big, it's like the size of a softball. Circle around, three, Four, five, seven, eight, keep going. And 10, switch and go the other way. One, two. This requires a lot of concentration, doesn't it? Trying to make that circle. Close your eyes and visualize a softball or a small cantaloupe. Very small cantaloupe. Eight, nine, 10, and relax. We're gonna switch and come to the other side. So turn that leg on. Straighten it and tense it, and then hover it two inches off the floor, and we're gonna circle it. Go one, two, really try to draw a perfect circle. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch and go the other way. Two, three, four. Oh, this side's so much harder. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. 
All right, that was good. Those aren't easy. Now that your forehead is glued to the back of your hands, we're gonna strengthen our upper back muscles. Pull the tummy muscles in and up away from the floor. As you lift your face and your shoulders up away from the mat, lift two, three, four, five, six, two more, seven, and eight. Good. Uh, make sure you have room over your head for this next one. And actually, no, you, no, actually you don't need much room out of your head, but by your sides you do. Um, so now for this one, you're gonna lift your head and shoulders, and then you're gonna separate your hands and squeeze your elbows into your side, and then bring them back under your forehead, lower back down. So it's lift, squeeze the elbows and the shoulder blades together, back to center, and lift. Squeeze, return, back down, and lift, and squeeze, return, and down. Two more, lift, and squeeze, under, and down. Last one, and squeeze, under, and down. Not easy, right? Push yourself up to quadruped. We're gonna come into a little bit of a thread the needle stretch here. So you're going to reach one hand under the other, stretch it all the way out as you lower your head and shoulder down to the mat. Find the stretch, breathe in. Exhale, come back up and go to the other side. Reach through, lower the head and shoulder. Breathe in and up. Let's do one more each side. And come back up. And last one. And all the way up. Good, tuck your toes. You're gonna lift your hips up to the ceiling, straightening your legs as much as you can. And then walk your hands towards your feet. We're coming up the same way we got down here. Pause here and take an inhale. As you exhale, tuck your tailbone, rolling up one vertebrae at a time till you're standing nice and tall. Inhale, bring the arms up and overhead. Exhale, bring them all the way down one more time. You think you're done, don't you? No, there's one more thing I want to show you. So, um, moving, coordinating, um, connecting your mind to your body, all such good principles of how to use exercise for mental health wellness. Um, but the other way is to actually get your heart rate up a little bit and get those neurotransmitters released, those endorphins, the, um, uh, the neurotransmitters, the endo, um, Cannab cannabinoids, those are really important too. Those often we don't hear about too much. Um, but by moving a little quicker, getting your heart rate up releases these, um, these uh, neurotransmitters that improve your feeling of wellness. And so in order to do that, we gotta move a little faster. So I'm gonna take you through a few things. Oh, good. So one way is a quick jumping jack, right? It's an easy one we can all do. You can do modified jumping jack here. Just stepping one foot out, or you can go into your full jumping jack. Listen to your body. Let's do 10 more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My favorite quick work little duo is um, squats and wall push-ups. I can just do them really quickly, even in the ladies' room in between patients. Um, so let's do a quick a uh, little a set of those. So squat and stand. Two, we're gonna go a little quickly. Three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not going too deep today. Eight, nine, and 10. And then, so I'll do that and then I'll do 10 wall push-ups. So grab a wall or a counter. You could do them on a sturdy counter and 10 push-ups, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. All right? They're releasing. Can't you feel it? <laughs> um, but you've all heard that music heals, right? And I've just told you how much exercise heals. So my favorite way to get my heart rate up and get the benefits of exercise for my mental health is to move to music. So I'll give you a little demonstration. You can do it with me. Um, 
Okay, so a little music for you, a little Michael Fronte. So just move, you know. Stepping out, reaching across. So after this video, if you're doing a chore that you really don't care about, put some music on and move a little to it. Shake your hips while you're folding laundry. <laughs> and now overhead. So the faster the music, the faster you move, obviously, right? But put on some music that you really like. Maybe this isn't your jam, doesn't matter. Something that moves you. We're gonna go low. Here we go, low. Opposite, reaching across. It's not really dancing, is it? <laughs> Just moving. You can freestyle here if you'd like. Let's go up with this. with it guys you get the idea <laughs> all right so great job keep up the good work and uh, let's use these principles to take care of ourselves and our spirit mind and body uh, have a great week everybody I'll see you next one bye